Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another slow game. Once again, I'm playing Victor Shen. He wanted to play this game on an anonymous account after the first time he played on his regular account. And now look, oh my god, as you can see, the excuses are already coming uh, before the game even begins. So if he loses, he's tired. All right. If you recall the last time I played him, it was a complete travesty. Uh, I just blundered at the end, crushing him all game. Uh, lately, I've been doing really well. I haven't lost in like seven of these games. I have six out of my last seven, three and a half out of four this tournament, so I'm playing better. But you know, he's still a dangerous player, uh, so I gotta be careful. Very, very careful. Anyway, let's get this on. Uh, anyway, let's start the game. Adjusting my seat here. And the game has begun. Nice rating there. Of course, um, everyone has pretty slow standard ratings on ICC because nobody ever plays stranded. They play when they're like kids, and then once they get good at chess, nobody good wants to play a slow rated game. So people kind of stop playing. You know, it's good good news. There's this weird buzzing happening outside my window, like literally five minutes ago, and it's been going on for an hour, and it just kind of stopped. So. That's good news. Um, anyway, we're just waiting for him to move. Look at this. He's insulting women by saying that somehow, if I'm a girl, I don't play brave openings or something. Uh, I obviously, he's prepared for the Grunfeld all day long. So, I mean, I, usually I think he goes knight f3. I, I honestly, I feel relatively prepared in these openings because with well, knight f3, there's not that much theory in the lines I'm playing nowadays. So that is nice. But he's playing the Nimzo Indian. All right, now I got to remember my theory. Castles. And I'm not going to play this d5 move. Like a3, bishop takes, queen takes d5 as a move. And I'm going to avoid that. Okay, so let's see if I can remember all the theory here. I think it's b6, or is it c5? It's c5, actually. I just gotta, just gotta remember. Give me a second, folks. c5, g3. I remember in Blitz for some reason. But now that we're playing a slow game, I'm forgetting all the moves. Pretty sure it's c5, and then they go... I mean, bishop g5 is a move, I know. Or did I switch to b6? Sorry, I'm just a little confused here. Why am I forgetting stupid moves? c5, g3. I can't quite remember how I get my bishop to b7 in, in a normal way. Huh. Oh, they, they c5 they take. Okay. Jeez, pre-moved it. Um, and now after knight a6, they go g3, knight takes, bishop g2, b6. Now I'm starting to remember. Just took me a little bit to um, get my bearings here. Uh, as you can see, Victor is a huge joker. So, <laughs> so it's really annoying that I lost the first game to him. But, you know, behind all that ridiculous comments that he says and stupid things that, you know, he types, he's actually, you know, a pretty decent chess player. Um, but let's note that I do have a 50 point higher FIDE rating than he does. Maybe it's more like 60 points. So, just something to keep in mind. Did he move? When did he move? I didn't see that happen. Knight takes, bishop g2, b6 is the move. And I just want to, okay, knight takes, bishop g2, b6. And then how does it go? Castles, bishop b7, knight b5, bishop e4, queen d1. Knight b7. I am booked up. 
it's good uh, when you're playing the slow games because it's much easier to remember the openings. Like sometimes in Blitz, I'm constantly forgetting stuff. But in, in the slow games, it's much easier to just kind of remember the move. Uh, Bishop f4 is a move and knight b5. Bishop f4, I'm going to forget what to do, but I think it's knight e4. So maybe I won't forget. I used to know... I know rook... What would happen? There, I had a weird game with... What the heck was it? Somebody blundered against me. Like, rook to d1 at the wrong moment. I know knight b5, bishop e4, queen d1, knight b7 is theory. And I have some ideas of my own there. But if he doesn't know the latest theory, he might just go bishop f4. Uh, rook d1, I recall that the, you know, if he moves his knight, bishop e4 actually traps the queen. So something to keep in mind after after rook to d1. Although I think it's a move anyway. But bishop f4 was my idea. I'm pretty sure it's knight e4. Let me see if I can remember. Hmm. Let's say bishop f4, knight on c to e4. What if he moves his knight like knight g5? Is that a problem of any sort? Oh, he does it. Uh, I'm pretty sure knight e4 is the move. And I'm pretty sure it's the c knight because it just looks right. But uh, the knight on, if I use the f knight, his, my, my bishop on b7 is still defended. The bad news is my bishop on b4 is kind of stranded out there. So I'm just a little... I'm just forgetting. I mean, I know this isn't the main move, but it's a dangerous one. I'm pretty sure it's knight c to e4. Let me th let me see if I can remember stuff. Knight c4, knight takes, bishop takes, queen a4. Position looks alright to me. Go a5, bishop c5. I, I just want to make sure if knight c to e4, knight g5, I just want to make sure that's not good. This is scary looking. Knight c4, knight g5. Bishop takes c3. Oh wait, I actually also have knight takes g5, and if bishop b7, knight h3, and then knight f4 type moves. Probably pretty solid for me. Let's look a little further. See, my knight on c5 gets in the way of my bishop retreat. Like, it could be really annoying, but I just have to calculate the stupid, the stupid uh, knight g5 type move. I guess I can always go d5. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's the move. So let me, ah, you know what? I'll just do it. I, I just remember because in the blitz game I did something else, and I remember this being the move. Let, all right, I'll just do it. I forget what I did in the blitz game. It was against some GM. Can't even remember if I won or lost or whatever, but I'm just pretty certain that this was the the move <laughs> that I studied. Again, it's not the main line these days, so I spent less energy on it than knight to b5. But I should probably know precisely what to do against the bishop to f4, since you may play opponents who are not super booked up and they'll get to this position, and knight b5 is a little less instinctive than bishop f4. So most people would just play bishop to f4 just to develop their piece. And therefore it would make sense to know what to do with a little more precision. Um, knight takes, bishop takes, queen a4. Looks like a logical thing. I kind of like a5. Mm, I'm also, yeah, I kind of like a5 there. And then maybe stick the bishop on c5. Put the queen on e7, maybe. I don't know. I'm pretty sure knight takes. Knight takes looks silly. I should take with the bishop, I'm pretty sure. Just because of this unpleasant pin with his bishop on g2 against my bishop on 
B7. I just don't want to don't want to deal with that so much. Let me look up his FIDE rating while I'm at it. Just curious. I kind of recall it being like 2420. Uh, mine is like 2426. Sorry, 2476. Well, it's 2402. So he dropped a little bit. Hmm. Anyway, obviously he's not all booked up here because he's thinking. I really want to look at the opening theory so bad. It's tough in chess nowadays because sometimes you just remember the move, but you can't really figure out why it's the right move. But I kind of just go with my memory now. Like, I'm pretty certain that we put a knight on e4 here and it's supposed to be fine. Or not fine, but it's the main thing to do. And so, you know, I don't see exactly why it's the right move. I mean, there's scary things happening. There's these pins. There's all kinds of annoying things that could happen. But my memory tells me it's right. And usually when I go with that, uh, it works out well. Like, I figure out what to do later. But I, I think at lower levels, you need to kind of... <laughs> I don't know... It's like if you just. Re I've had a lot of students who just remember something's a move and they're totally wrong and then they get crushed. But I like to think my memory is better than that. And I think it is. Like I study harder or I study somehow. Like I have more experience studying openings. So I don't just actually forget and play a horrible move. I'm pretty certain this is the move. <laughs> and I, again, I think knight takes knight, bishop takes, queen a4. It looks logical to me, and then I kind of like a5. The idea is that if we just move the bishop away, he can push it away from the c5 square as well with a move like b4. And I think the bishop on e7, it's a little passive. Like, I'm not sure that... It's hard for me to say that I'm not, like, a little bit worse with that bishop on e7 instead of c5. So... That's kind of why I want to. That's kind of why I want to go a5, just to take some nice squares for my bishop on the c5 square. On the other hand, after a5, he could maybe play bishop to e3. Although I think bishop c5 should be okay there because if he takes, I take, I stick my queen on b6. I pressure down the b line. Seems okay to me. All right, he does this. I mean, you know, I've already thought about this, so maybe I'll I'll make a quick move after queen a4 and just go a5 real fast. Um, because I do think bishop e3, I can even go queen c7. It's no real problem. Uh, bishop c6 is also playable. I mean, a5 does make a weakness on b6 that you could potentially exploit, but... Still feels like the right move. So let's blitz it out so he thinks he's in opening theory. Psych him out a little bit. About three minutes on the clock. And, and this is not like that slow a time control. I mean, it's slower than blitz. It's slower than 15 minutes, for sure. But, you know, time trouble still exists. I'm going to play this move. So I, just, I know I'm going to play the move, so I'm just going to do it and stop wasting time. You know, I could still think about things, but sometimes you just know that you're going to play a certain move, and when that's the case, and it's not like a super slow game, you, just, you should just play it. So now I have c5 squares. Uh, rook to d1 is pretty natural. That's what he does. Queen c8. It's interesting. Um, rook c8 is also a playable move. Bishop c6 this is certainly a serious move. I kind of like queen c8. And then if he goes bishop g5, though. Um, oh, I can take on c4, maybe. Probably, actually. And I can always play bishop c6 in these, in these positions. Hmm. What to do? H6 is interesting, but it seems a little, a little too slow here. Hmm. 
rook c8. Rook c8. <clears throat> What's the deal with that move? Rook to c1. Somehow it just feels a little, a little clunky to me. I mean, queen c8, bishop c5. Problem is bishop c6, queen b3, and my, my b6 pawn is a little, a little loose in some key lines. I have knight e4 there though, so I, I don't know what the problem would be. I'm gonna go queen c8 and. Am I? I? Hmm. I think because I have these tricks. Um, like queen c8, bishop d6, bishop takes, rook takes, queen c7, and if, if rook if rook a to d1, bishop d5 traps the rook. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And again, if bishop g5, I have bishop c6 and knight e4. Feels alright to me. Uh, b5 is a strange idea in some positions. Like if, if bishop g5, okay, bishop g5 is horrible, but b5, queen takes bishop c6, he has only one square on e5. Unfortunately, I think it's, it's an okay square. This is a complete fantasy variation anyway. It will not. It makes no logical sense. All right, rook to c1, kind of expected. Now what? Queen b7 looks pretty, pretty logical. Hmm. Momento. Ah, I'm just gonna do it. Ah, connect my rooks. Rook c8 soon. At any moment, bishop c6 could be like slightly annoying. I think he should maybe consider just going like knight h4, because my bishop actually. And I can always take and go d5 then. And that's okay for me. Hmm. I mean, d5 at any moment actually could be a, a decent move, but I kind of want to go rook c8. I, I would like to go h6 someday. Which seems like a, a nice place to be somehow, or like nice preventative move, but. It's not the most pressing need to stop bishop g5 type moves just yet. So I think uh, my next move will likely be rook a to c8 if he makes some kind of random move. I don't know what kind of random moves he has here though. It looks like he has to do something. Like what's he going to do, h4, h3? Like every move he plays is going to do something here. I mean, I guess bishop e5 is, is sort of randomish. And then I'll go bishop c6, I imagine, and then maybe knight e4. Let's see, bishop e5 makes sense. I could also go bishop e7 after bishop e5. So it's a little, a little passive. But, oh no, you can just take and go rook takes d7. Never mind. So I guess I'll go bishop c6 after bishop e5. And we have a nice little edge in the clock, which is it's nice because last game if you remember I was down in time and that, that really that really haunted me. In the technical phase I just played pretty badly. Mm, drinking some water here. So tasty. Water is tasty sometimes. Oh my Checking, um, this is the first round he's played in this tournament, whereas I've already played four games. What a slacker, right? It's today's date. I gotta check. It's July 3rd, huh? 
Happy July 4th, everyone. Tomorrow. I'm playing this game before July 3rd. I just... That's the release date of the video. So we have a nice little time edge now. He doesn't quite know what to do. So I'm liking this. Four minutes. Um, oh no, the buzzing is coming back. I hope you guys can't hear it. There's this crazy ass buzzing noise outside. It sounds like some kind of generator or something. I don't think you guys can hear it. It's actually, it was louder earlier. Yeah, it's not easy to come up with a, a great plan for white here. I mean, I think Bishop E5 looks like a thing to do, at least. We'll see. We'll see what he comes up with. He goes Bishop D6. All right. Uh, I, mean, I was thinking I was going to take that. Bishop c6. What's the deal with that? He moves the queen. I take his bishop. I go knight e4. Looks fine for me, of course. Question is, any reason to go bishop c6 before... before I react to this, this bishop thing? Yeah, the buzzing is getting louder. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to play... Jeez, can you guys hear that? That's crazy. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go bishop c6 next next move. So, I, I mean, I just, I just play it now, see where he goes with the queen. I mean, if queen c2, I can maybe go back to e4 if I want, like, to repeat for whatever reason. I don't think I'll do that, though. Queen c2, I'll probably just take and go knight e4, maybe. Knight e4, just thinking. Um, interesting. I could even just go rook c8 after queen c2. It's not so bad. He takes and I take on a... I take on, he takes on b4, I take on b4, and he's got some, like, issues here. I guess he could just play rook a1 to defend the a2 pawn, but it's, like, a little awkward. I can take and go queen c7. I have all kinds of tricks, so I think he has to retreat the rook then. That looks like the most solid thing to do somehow. Oh my god, that buzzing is killing me, man. I think he should go rook d4 then. Hmm, takes away my, my e4 square. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take, right? Is rook c8 really legit? A legit thing I might do? I don't think so. Pre moved it again. Very impressive. Question is Bishop d5 a move? I mean, it looks kind of risky. And Pawn takes. I was going to go Knight e8, but I mean, somehow it's going to suck. I don't know. Pawn takes Pawn or something. Just too, too risky in my mind. I, I could just keep the tension, Rook c8. You know, because I'm going to push his um, rook away at some point. I just don't know exactly when or how. So, like, let's not let's not rush things with that. Let's go rook c8. Now he doesn't quite know what my plan is. Which I like. And, and if rook to d1, b5 is an idea. It's a serious idea. Because, yeah, I mean, what's his rook doing on d6? It's actually, it like, can be a target sometimes. Because of those aforementioned trapping the rook tricks. So, like, I think he should move his queen out of the way. The queen d1 looks a little... I don't know, it just looks like a little unhealthy to me. Queen d1, I mean, bishop takes d5 is much more serious. Because then, um, if pawn takes rook c1, queen c1, queen d8, oh, queen f4. 
Uh, and maybe I can do something there, but it's probably not. <clears throat> uh, Bishop d5 is a weird move anyway. I can always play b5. I could go rook to d8, just to be extra solid. Hmm. Queen d1, knight d4, rook d4. It's a little annoying. And I can go d6, threatening like e5 type moves. And then he can do, probably do something though, like my knight, move his knight somewhere. I don't know exactly. I don't want to worry, worry my brain about that before he goes queen d1. I just, it's too far in the future. I have limited brain power. <laughs> I just want to, um, you know, Save that. You know, like sometimes if, if your opponent's like gonna play a move twenty percent of the time, do you really want to burn your brain thinking about what to do? That's a strange looking move. I mean, ninety four like his rook's almost trapped. Also, it's like there's pins along the c file now. Like b five is, is more annoying than before. So like ninety four rook to d four. Let's see if I can find some killer move. I mean, I, I already see. No, I mean I saw. Like e five is is uh, so close. To winning. Hold on, so close. Knight takes e5. Knight to c5. He has knight takes c6 there. Knight takes d3. Knight e7. That should be okay for him. God, it's close, man. Well, maybe after knight e4, he can go rook. Can maybe take on c6. Bishop d5 now is, is pinned immediately, so like that's also very annoying. Huh. Bishop d5 is starting to look really tempting right now. I guess he can't take it at all. I mean, I just take his rook on, <laughs> on c1. So bishop d5, how does he extr extricate himself? He can play a move like queen d4. Attacking b6, which unfortunately, I mean, I have rook c5 still, but this is going to require some calculation, which is annoying. I don't like to, I don't like to calculate things, especially when I feel good about my position already. Oh boy. Well, let's look at b5 some more. He can go c, you know, c5 is horrible. I mean, b5 looks good too, honestly. Like, I have so many good looking moves here. Knight e8, make any sense? Wait, knight e8 wins material. <laughs> knight e8, rook d4, now, now e5, and, and now you really have nowhere to go. And e4 is coming next move. I win. Material. It's funny, I was only looking at knight e4, but knight e8, oh wait, he has knight g5, Jesus, lucky, lucky chump. Because the mate on, damn it, I was so excited for a second there. But he has the mate on h7. It's so like knight e8, knight g5, and, I mean, uh, let me see, is, it, is there any way that's still good for me? Probably not. All right, so knight e4, knight g5 is also. No, I can just take the knight. Uh, maybe I should just go b5, keep things simple. Not try to win the game right away. And knight d5 also. There's uh, this knight g5 move there too. I just. I'm sorry, bishop d5 is what I was looking at. God, I mean, it might be good. Queen a3 is also playable. All right, let's calculate bishop d5 one more time. I'm also worried you can sack the exchange in some positions there, but bishop d5, just like if I miss a move, I can suck. <laughs> bishop d5, queen e3. Rook c5. God, somehow it feels good for me. I just, I feel like everything's good for me. I don't want to like take. Oh my God! It's just such a huge. It feels like a huge risk to me. That's all I'm saying. And I'm like not not sure I want to do that here. 
it's not really a risk. Though. I can always just go back to C6, lose the tempo, and live to see another day, I think. Let's think. Bishop d5, queen d4, rook c5. I'm threatening queen c7. I'm still pinned. I might just have to do it. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Wait, wait, wait. Queen b3. Then b5 is looking strong to me. Yeah, bishop d5, queen b3, b5. Ah, uh, man. I hate when I have to do something risky in there. Technical. It's not even risky, I guess, but because I can always come back. Whatever. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um. You know, I could if I miss. The thing is, I like my position enough where I think I can just come back to c6 with the bishop, and I'm fine. Like I could waste two moves. So like, if I just miss something. That would that doesn't allow me to go queen c7. I think I can do it. I can survive basically. Yeah, queen b3, b5 is a huge pain in the butt for him. Too many pins, right? It's queen e3, rook c5 was my big plan. Or I can maybe take him c4, but that was my plan. Because I don't see what's wrong with the rook on c5. Oh wait, Jesus Christ. It's not pinned anymore. I mean, it might still be okay somehow, but it's useful information. <laughs> he can go queen e3, I think. And I might have to, I may end up going back. Kind of like I, I talked about. I mean, I didn't want to do it, obviously, but I missed something. I mean, I just... Well, let's make sure. Let's make sure. Yeah, that looks like a problem. Queen e3, rook c5, pawn takes bishop. Just looking for tricks. Rook takes rook, queen takes queen b8, queen f4. I mean... Oh, he did this instead, though. Yeah, that doesn't look... Now his rook's not defended, so I think it's less less precise. All right, so rook c5 now looks at least annoying. I said make the move quick. I mean, again, I can always bring the bishop back to c6 here, and he's still pinned, so I'll just do it. Queen e3 was, I think, much stronger, unless I missed something. At least safer. I'm gonna try to get that, that guy, but I mean, it's, it's still not gonna be easy. Like, rook d1, queen c7. Um, queen e f4, that can't be good. Knight h5 has to be good. For me, yeah, queen d4. I don't like that move. It's the thing, you know. It's it's it's, it's very easy to miss uh, subtleties sometimes. Like I miss queen e3, and I think he missed it in return. And I could be totally wrong. Maybe it just doesn't work, uh, and I, I I'm overlooking something. But it, it looked annoying to me. I got a two minute time edge and I got a rook trapped on d6. So let's see what he does about this. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look pleasant. It doesn't look pleasant for him at all. Yeah, I think, I mean, okay, rook d1, queen c7, right? What, what, was we, what were we thinking about here? Does he just have to sack the exchange? I mean, he gets a, okay, queen c7, pawn takes bishop, queen takes rook, pawn takes e6. Oh, I can go queen takes e6, though. That looks pretty good for me. Oh, maybe he's just giving up. Giving up the material. I mean, rook c4 is also playable, by the way. 
All right, let's, I mean, it's like a, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, rook c4, you can take on b6. All right, for some reason, I, I forgot about that. Um, I was like, now I'm really going to crush you if I can do that. But queen c7, is there any problem here? What's his idea? I'm not sure. Well, I'm going to do it. I only live once. Queen f4 and h5 looks pretty strong somehow. Well, it's, you know, I, I see why it could be interesting, but if queen f4, knight h5, queen h4, let's say. Queen takes d6, queen takes h5. And I can just go bishop c6 there, I think. Or bishop f3 is even easier. So that doesn't work for him at all. Because uh, I'm attacking his, he's my bishop's pin, but I'm attacking his queen with my rook on c5. So I think he's got some serious issues here. But, you know, he's tired. He's had a long day. So, <laughs> uh, it's understandable. Understandable to get crushed. No, wait, Greg, stop. Stop getting cocky. Last time you were up a pawn, you started getting cocky. You lost. You lost that game, Greg. So, stay mentally focused. And, you know, try to pull out another win. After that horrible start, half out of five to start the stupid slow games, man. You must have thought I was the worst player in the world, all you all you viewers. And it comes once a week, so it takes forever for you to find out that I'm not actually so bad at chess. It's brutal that it takes so long. Oh, he's suffering, man. He doesn't know what to do. I should just tell him to resign. He's gonna go for. He's gonna find some tricky attempt, I assume. Although there's really not much. I mean, Queen of Four Knight H Five wins in immediately. He's just down the exchange for nothing. For zero. I think he has to go. Yeah, that's what he has to do. I think. And now, let's see, do I have any more accurate moves? No. Mm -hmm. uh, pawn takes pawn, I assume, will happen. Uh, e4 is a playable move as well, actually. Let's let's not discount that. E4 is a really playable move. Okay, and he does it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see that move. It probably I can just play queen b8, and everything should be okay. Or knight takes d5 is also playable, but it walks into a pin. Let's think. Yeah, knight takes d5, walks into a pin that I really don't want to walk into. Queen c7, d6 is like a little annoying. That's why I wanted to go queen b8. So queen b8, like if if e5, uh, knight takes d5. Just looks okay for me. Whatevs. <coughs> Queen B8 has been played. <coughs> D6. All right. He wants to go E5 and get like some kind of bind on me, which is it's like somewhat annoying, I admit. Rook C8 seems strong. Um, pawn to E5 is like worth looking at, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna go Rook C8. How bad can it be? All right, e5. So rook d5. He must play queen a4. Like almost winning. Like b5 and a4, right? He just he just wins. I think. I mean, I should talk smack right now, but I'm a nice guy, so I'm gonna resist. But I'm pretty sure rook, rook d5, queen h, queen a4 is the only move in the b3. Queen b3, a4. Okay. Oh, and he resigns. <laughs> See the difference when I win? When I win, complete, <coughs> complete annihilation. Um,
<laughs> Sorry. Um, very, very good game, me, I think. Well, you know, I did miss Queen E3. Um, Uh, first, I'm going to check my... <coughs> check my um, opening analysis. You know, I've done, I've done studying of these lines. Um, well, let me check my... Let me check my stuff here real quick. Have some analysis. <coughs> what did he do instead? He played like something peculiar. Uh, maybe ninety four, right? Wait a second, why is he LOLing me? Did I mess up? Okay. So, yeah, now you, that's like a little annoying. It should be E7, maybe. Uh, knight g4, is it useless? I mean, I was thinking, I remember thinking this is a backup move. Seemed okay to me. Why can't I find the stupid analysis? What the hell? Sorry, I'm looking at my phone for analysis in this opening. Um, what do I do here? G6, I guess? I don't know what else to do. You know what? I have it in my chest base. Whatever. How is my um? What the hell are my openings? Give me a second, guys. See where okay, new opening up. Sorry, I'm looking up my database here. And I will tell you everything in just a second. Yeah, so basically my opening notes went to A5, and I thought black was fine there. I'm going to Houdini this position, though, from a move before.
Ah, uh, sorry. I, you know, it's tough because I'm, I'm typing, and um, it's very hard to type and move at the same time. But okay, obviously this stuff would have been better than what he did. Um, but you know, overall my position seemed okay. I, I would have played not like I wouldn't have played these bad moves in the game. I'm pretty sure. But like, like at this point. I don't really know everything now, I just have to scare him. Um, but yeah, queen e3 looks better, because I, I thought I had to just go back. Oh, I could take on c4, but I, you know, it's kind of annoying. I mean, my, yeah, my position's fine, I could just take. Let's see, was I really winning after after rook c4? Yeah, rook c5, it looks like... I mean, it looks like knight e1 for some reason is okay, but... Obviously, it's not easy. But yeah, for the most part this game, you know, I played pretty solidly. He made some, like, small... Like some some kind of inaccuracies, and then oh, that's the idea. What can I just take? <laughs> yeah, I mean this is obviously extremely hard to see because it's a uh, just very weird. But there's a there's a pin at the end. Um, Houdini makes everyone feel like a child at chess because it sees all the, uh, all the random tricks. Come on, let me, one second. I want to see if he has any statements for the audience, uh, for you guys. Because, you know, he's talking about, talking a lot of smack after the last time when he beat me. So, very important to, for the world to see see the revenge. And now I have four and a half out of five in this tournament. I better mark that score up real quick. I can't can't wait any longer. Got another game this weekend too. Oh you would like to congratulate me on my victory. I see. Oh, sorry. I know this is like dead era time. I want to hear what else he has to say after this. Um, there's not much more to say. I mean, like, <laughs> all right. Um, I just kind of want to say, like, like this. This queen d3 seemed awkward to me. I mean, if you guys remember, I was thinking about this, but knight g5 is annoying. My plan was rook here, e5, followed by e4, but knight g5 always saves the day. Um, yeah, I think bishop d5 was a good a good try. This was my backup attempt. I thought I was okay here, because this like leaves his, my d5 square is pretty strong, I thought. Um, let's see, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I think I just played fine, had an okay position, and, well, you know, I mean, bishop d5, I did miss this move, I mean, it, it seems to think I, I should just do this, and then kind of just play, you know, I have central pawns here, so, like, that's something to definitely keep in mind, oh, knight d5 also. Um, I should end the video now before he says something, uh, not as nice. So, thank you guys for watching. I will see you, um, tomorrow.
Oh, not tomorrow. Next week with another um, slow chess game. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.